Hello and thanks for tuning in to Powell Software's Welcome to the New Normal. Powell Software develops digital workplace solutions that improve the employee experience, helping companies write their own future of work by leveraging the talent of their entire workforce. My name is Tony Todd uh, from the Rumeur Public Agency in Paris. In this series, we speak with business leaders, thinkers, visionaries. We explore the mega trends, the ecosystems and the technology that are shaping the way we live, and the way we work as the economy, we hope, uh, recovers and we emerge into some kind of new normal. Today, we are talking to Peter Capelli. Hello, Peter. Thanks for joining us. Hello, Tony. Uh, Peter is a professor of management at the Wharton Business School. He joins us from Philadelphia uh, this morning, uh, the city of brotherly love. Um, and uh, Peter has just uh, published a new book, The Future of the Office, Working from Home, Remote Work, and the Hard Choices We All Face, which is available from all good uh, book retailers. Um, and we're going to hear more about Peter's thinking now. Um, Peter, you talk about the hard choices we all face. What are those choices? You know, during the pandemic, uh, a large proportion of office workers were sent home to work from home. And many of those folks, in the US, a majority say that they would like to keep working in some way from home. Many employers want them to come back. And, you know, how do we solve this dilemma? And there are lots of different ways in which you might do it, uh, but they all come with some choices and they have consequences. Uh, and the most important of those is that things after the pandemic, when we can come back to the office, Working from home will not be the same as it was during the pandemic. And the big reason for that is during the pandemic, we were all in this together. Most offices, everybody was working from home. After, that won't be the case. We'll have one group of people in the office and another group at home. And the ones at home have chosen to be there. And we know from 20 years of research on telecommuting, some people have always done this, that it doesn't work so well for the people who are working from home. They don't get promoted as quickly or as often. Their pay tends not to be so high. They have less engagement with their colleagues. And then there are questions on the employer side about whether this is going to work for them. So, you know, it is a big decision what to do. The employers, unfortunately, cannot duck this. Either you decide to bring people back or you let them stay home. Either way, it's a choice. Does this mean that companies are going to have to reinvent their organisational model, um, uh, find new ways of being flexible, um, uh, catering for the, the, the needs and the aspirations of their employees? Well, if they care about those 52% of employees who would like in some way to have a kind of hybrid model, and at least in the US, about another 10% who would like to work permanently, then they're gonna to have to manage things quite differently. If they don't want to cater to that, we just have to see what happens, whether those employees who want that will go to other employers who will offer it to them or whether they'll just be unhappy going back to the office. You know, it's a big experiment uh, to see what happens. But if they try to adapt, it will require some really different ways of operating. And I suppose for um, many companies, especially, and I'm thinking Google here, who have invested massively in real estate, they have a vested interest in keeping as many employees in the office as possible. Is this going to be a big challenge for the, the real estate market, for the American economy, the global economy? Well, uh, yes, it is. And the Federal Reserve in Philadelphia is having a conference that I'm co-hosting uh, on exactly that question. Because if you do end up having a lot of employees work from home, one of the reasons employers might like that is they could shrink their office space and save money. And interesting about uh, Google, as you were saying, Google has also, in addition to in the past, made great efforts to get employees to come to the office and stay there. They're now allowing employees to leave. 20% can work remotely permanently. Another 20% can relocate anywhere as long as they can somehow get to a Google office when they need to. And the other 60% can spend a month a year 
working anywhere in the world and several days a week working from home. So it's very puzzling what's going to happen here. I've read a lot recently about the 322 working model. So three days in, two days at home and two days off. Do you think that a similar model might start to be applied across companies or is every company going to have to define its own way of doing it? You know, at the moment, at least on the U.S. side, there just does not appear to be any consensus. You have the New York companies, especially the banks, who have quite clearly said everybody's coming back. And you have the Silicon Valley companies who have said everybody, mostly in the offices, could work permanently remote if you would like. And I think most of the companies are waiting to see what to do. I mean, they're maybe waiting for a consensus. I'm not sure there will be one. Uh, because it depends very much on the kind of work people do, whether this is feasible to work from home permanently or not, or even a long term. So I don't think we know yet. There doesn't seem to be a, a consensus. You know, three days in the office and two days at home might sound okay, but what are those three days going to be? Which days are they going to be? The problem for employers is if your employees choose different days, then you don't have much reason to be in the office. The whole reason to be there was to have people together for meetings and uh, interactions and agile like project teams where you're doing constant feedback. But if you know people can be in and out different days, you can't do that. So it, you know these are some of the hard choices we've got to deal with. Do you think that big companies, and I'm not going to name any here, but any of the big companies who have been working hard to develop tools that allow us to work remotely. Are they being uh, hypocritical if they are insisting that people come back to the office? You know, we've worked so hard to make these tools to make it work, <laughs> but we need you to come back and work on them from the office. Yeah, well, those are the companies uh, among the group that are allowing people to work from, from home. On the other hand, some of them, uh, one in particular, as you say, is making a reasonably big push to bring people back uh, into the office. So, you know, I think, uh, are they being hypocritical? I think they're saying there's, uh, on their product side, there's a big market for some employers who are going to choose to allow employees to work from home for various reasons that make sense for them. And it's a big enough market that they can say, you all choose. So the big watchwords uh, from listening to you are going to be that flexibility, that agility. Uh, but there's also a um, sense of fairness. And when I say fairness, I'm referring to uh, younger employees trying to get their first step on the ladder. Um, they do benefit enormously from being in the office and surrounded by colleagues and managers, uh, learning what works, what doesn't, how to uh, forge ahead. Um, is there a big social challenge as well? Do we need to look after uh, people who actually need or want to come into the office? Uh, yes, there's all kinds of challenges with respect to this. As you say, this is a quite different experience for people like me who've been with my employer for a long time, and I know most of the people there. But I have colleagues who we hired a year ago who I have never met, and they have really yet to be in the office. So if you're a new hire, you get a very different experience, right? And how are we going to manage, as you say, these social interactions, especially for new hires, but otherwise for other people, there is something to be gained, particularly in organizational culture, from having people face to face. Most of what we know about commitment, about commitment to the organization is really kind of commitment to the people in the organizations, not to the building per se, or even the logo or image of the company. And if you don't see people often, your commitment to the organization declines. And this is something that we've seen in these studies of telework that went on for the last 20 years. Yeah, so uh, developing and nurturing a company culture is very difficult when you're only seeing people on the screen rather than uh, having a coffee with them or going out for lunch with them uh, being face-to-face -face, uh, has enormous value. Right. We, we don't know whether you can really have an organization of any size where there is commitment to it if the people never see each other. Very interesting. Peter Capelli, thank you so much for joining us today. 
Thank you. Um, if you have any questions uh, for Peter, or if you want to uh, read more about uh, his thinking and his research, uh, again, his book, uh, The Future of the Office, uh, Work from Home, Remote Work, and The Hard Choices We Face uh, is available through all good um, book retailers. You can follow us on LinkedIn. You can follow us on Twitter. Uh, you can uh, follow us and subscribe on YouTube as well. Uh, make uh, comments underneath the video. Make comments on social networks. Uh, if you have questions, we want to have them answered for you. Thank you very much for joining us and see you next time.